Let me ask you, on average, how much are your profits increasing month by month? Now, if you're not seeing a significant uplift, chances are you're plateauing in business and that's not good. Hi, it's Limpidetti here and in today's episode, you will learn from Tristan Wright, business Sherpa and CEO of Evolve to Grow. He is going to give you the five steps to improving your profit and stop the plateau. Now, Tristan is not only a knowledgeable business coach, he is also an experienced coach, having built his own tiny startup to a seven-figure business. He's endured the highs and lows and earned through experience, so he can offer you more than just business school buzzwords or vague advice. So listen on to learn Tristan's five steps method. Hi Tristan, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How about yourself? I am good and thank you so much for being here and teaching us one of the most important topics for any business owners out there, which is about increasing your profit. And you've got five ways to do that, so I really want to deep dive into it. (laughs) But before we get into that, I'm so curious about why you came up with the business name Business Sherpa or calling yourself Business Sherpa and what motivated you to get into, you know, into business coaching. Oh, how long have we got? Have we got five minutes or have we got two <laughs> hours? <laughs> so, as long as you uh, So, okay, guys, we're going to be here for about three hours. So go grab a cup of coffee or maybe two or three cups of coffee. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to stay awake. So business Sherpa. Uh, I'm going to give you the example of a Sherpa. So a Sherpa is someone that helps guide you to the top of a mountain. Typically, it's Mount Everest. The name Sherpa is is someone's surname. It's a family surname, and they they guide people to the top of Mount Everest. They've been there up and down hundreds of times. They've fallen off the side of the track, and, but they know the best way to the top of the mountain. And I thought, okay, Sherpa, that's that's basically what I do. I guide business owners to the top of their mountain to their goals. I've reached the top of my mountain. I built a business. I sold a business. On the way up. I fell off the side of the mountain, I fell off the path and I climbed back onto the path and got to the top. So I've been to the top, fallen off. Now I'm helping others get to the top of their their goal, their mountain, hence the merging of business and business Sherpa. It's fancy talk for a business coach. Yeah. Okay. What, what, what kind of business did you build? It was sportswear. So designing, creating, manufacturing, cycling, running, triathlon clothing. So. I'm one of the guys to blame for the mammals or those people that you see see in Lycra. Yeah. <laughs> <Obviously>, <laughs> so, <they won't. laughs> um, so out of all of the, I guess, the, the businesses that you have coached, the businesses that you've run, I guess, what are the, some of the common reasons why or the common problems that people face in business? Ah, uh, how long's a piece of string? There's so many. A lot of the time, business owners get into the business because they're good at what they do and so they might be good at sales or they might be good at marketing for their others or they might be good at finance so they're really good at that and they think they can do it better than the rest that's why or they can help others out better than the business that they're in but what new business owners don't realize or business is that there is so many different areas of a business there's sales there's finance there's marketing there's strategy there's people there's mindset and you can't just focus on one of them. You need to focus on, uh, on all of those areas. So if you, or you need to have a knowledge of each of those areas. So, but if you forget one of them, your profit drops or your people disappear or your clients disappear. So it's finding that happy medium and working out which is, which is the area to focus on first or give them most attention to. Yeah, business is very complicated. Over 10 years of being in business, I know how hard it is and it gets, the bigger you are, the more, it just, it just never stops, right? But when it comes to profitability, like what is a healthy profit? You know, like, you know, I remember when I first got into business, I remember making a sale, which I kind of stumbled into doing an agency service because someone asked me to do a website. I said, okay, well, I can get someone to do it for you. And I didn't really know how to charge. And I just said, okay, well, I, I could get it for 600. I'm, I just put 400 on top of that's $400 profit. But I quickly realized that I didn't even encounter any of my time in it. I just thought I made $400 profit there, but it wasn't nope. really. Profit. So, you know, tell me more about profit and, and what is a healthy profit. So it's interesting that we're talking about profit before sales because most people will initially go to, to revenue as opposed to profit. And I, when I'm talking to business, they, they, they tell me about what their revenue is. And I go back to them and say, 
I don't care what your revenue is. I care about what your bottom line is and and what's actually coming back into your back pocket. So rather than talking specific percentages and everything, I rather look at it by saying, how many hours do you want to be working? And how much money do you want coming into your back pocket? So after all of your taxes, all of your expenses, all of your overheads, what do you want coming back to you? So if you want a hundred grand going into your bank account and you want to be working 30 hours a week, how do we then reverse engineer the simplest way to achieve that? You might actually, you might be doing a million dollars in revenue per annum and getting that 100K profit, but that's not the easiest way to do it because you're actually doing, a, you're working a 70 hour work week. You could change your business model up entirely and only be doing 300K per annum and still making that 100K and working half as much just by changing the type of client that you're working with, the average dollar sale, the profit margin or the operational costs of the business, or even the, the types of transactions you have with the client. Is it one transaction or 10 transactions per client? So, yeah. And when you're saying profit and back to your pocket, do you include your own salary or is profit like on top of the typical salary that you want to pay yourself? So so in this instance, when I'm talking about what's going into your back pocket, I'm talking from a business owner's perspective, the net benefit to you. So that's a combination of your salary and the profits, the money that you you can choose what you do with. So yeah. from a, I'm not an accountant or financial advisor, but your your accountant sometimes will say that you should be earning 60 grand a year. And the next year they might say you should be having a salary of 100K per year, just depending on the other things that are happening within your business. So what I care about is is what can actually come back to you after all of, all of the ways that you move the money Not around. Not sure if you know this answer, but let's just say the revenue grows higher. Maybe it's 20 million, maybe it's more. Is yep. there a percentage of what a typical owner should expect to pay themselves? Because you know how sometimes you hear CEOs of big companies earn like a few million dollars and la, la, la. As a business owner, like what is reasonable? You know, is there a percentage that on the revenue that you could feel like you can take home? It really depends on the business, whether it's a service-based business or a product-based business and the industry that you're in, whether you're in shipping or whether you're in marketing. For me though, rather than a percentage, it's you've got to calculate it in the back of your mind, it's on the back, back of a piece of paper, on, on the back of a napkin. Being a business owner, there's two things. If you were doing the same job for someone else, what would you be getting paid? So let's say, so the closest thing is a, a general manager. As a general manager in charge of this, you might be getting paid 200K per annum. Okay, times that by the risk factor. So the risk factor is where you should actually get be getting paid more. So the risk factor might be 1.8. So that means you should be getting whatever, 320,000. The way I look at it is if, if you're a general manager in a similar business, what is the salary they're getting? And then times it by the risk factor because you're liable for everything that happens in the business. So yeah. that's that's how I calculate it. That makes a lot of sense because sometimes I'm always feeling guilty or like, I wonder when should I give myself a pay rise? And like, I don't know because there's no benchmark, there's no numbers that anyone teaches me. But hey, a business coach like yourself definitely gives me the right guidance. Talking about profitability, you, you mentioned that you do have five ways. Can you please go mm. through those five ways for me? Someone wants to increase the money into the back pocket. Naturally, the first way that someone's going to, or business is going to do it, they're going to be like, let's go get hundred more sales at the same amount. So if we go and get a hundred more sales at the same amount, yes, we're going to improve our profitability, but there's other factors that you could actually improve your profitability, but not do so much work. Cause to go and get a hundred new sales, that's going to cost you, how much is it going to go? It's going to cost you hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars to get a hundred new sales. So if you think about it, the, the factors in increasing your profitability, you've got leads, which is the top of the funnel. So you need to increase your leads. You might be 20% conversion of your leads. What if you changed your leads from 20% conversion to 30% conversion? And what if your average dollar sale is $100? What if you change your average dollar sale to $150? And then what if you change the amount of sales you had per client from one to 1.3 sales? So if you think about it, we're starting to multiply. And then the last thing is your profit margin. So your operational expenses. So what if at the moment it's a, 
your profit margin was 25%. What if you're able to become a bit more efficient and and make it 30% of profit margin? So rather than actually focusing on just increasing your leads or increasing your conversion rate by a massive factor, why not focus on those five areas and actually think of if you increase each of those five areas by 6%, you get a multiplying effect and your profit margin increases exponentially just by putting a small amount of focus on each of those different five areas. Oh, wow. I never would think that because, yes, most people just think, hey, how do I just get more leads in? So I guess the first thing I would do in my case would be looking at my ideal client and see if I attracted the right clients who would then be able to spend more, right? Is that what you're thinking? So, so step one, leads. You can you can increase your leads. So you can go from 100 to 150 leads. But that's going to get you so far. How do you improve your conversion rate as well? So rather than converting half of those leads, how do you convert two thirds of those leads? So at the same time as growing from 100 leads to 150, how do you, and increasing your conversion, growing from 50 to 75, how do you go for, actually increase your conversion and go to 100 as well? So, and that conversion means it's maybe like your sales process could be improved, the way your customer service experience is made, you know, is that uh, some of Correct. the... Correct. So, sales process, talking to the right customers, offering them the right service or offering them the right offer. And it's, it could be just as simple as auditing all the phone calls that you have of, of sales conversations and listening to your sales team or whoever it is that's making the sales calls and seeing if they're actually following a proper process and actually upskilling or training those people. And that's going to be a simple win for, to, to improve your conversions from, say, that 50% to 75%. Yeah. So yeah, for us, we kind of experienced this challenge where our marketing is good in a sense, we can attract a lot of leads, but maybe the marketing is not effective in that it attracts everybody. And that everybody means that the conversion rate is very low because it's not the right kind of lead because we don't have the right service for them. So you may not be qualifying them correctly before they get onto the sales call. So you may not have be asking the correct questions prior to the sales call so you can direct them into the correct funnel. So you might you might have three different services and you, you're you getting onto sales call, but you don't know which service to sell them. So you need to have a qualification set before that sales call so the uh, the salesperson knows what what to sell to them and they're going to, and what their pain points are, what their goals are, so they can you can actually increase your conversion rate. Okay, so once you've uh, increased your conversion rates and you've got the clients in, this is where you think about how you can give more value and and resell to the same person again and again. And I guess that's where they can buy. Yeah, you buy more. You've you've jumped one step. Okay. Um, A lot of people have a limiting belief. A lot of businesses have a limiting belief around the dollar value of what they're providing. So for you... You may value something at $1,000, but your client would really be valuing that at $1,500. So it's about testing the market and slowly increasing your sale price from $1,000 to $1,100 to $1,200. So for selling the same service at a slightly higher price point. And that's by understanding your worth and value and getting feedback from the clients to understand how, what they actually value your offer at. Mm, so you can actually increase your price. And when you're increasing your price, does it necessarily mean you you have to think of, you have to add more value or you're just saying that you really need to find that number that p- creates a perception that you are that premium pro- um, value? Yeah. So for me, it's not actually, you might not actually be adding more value. You might be actually undercharging yourself. And this is a limiting belief or a mindset issue that so many businesses have, especially mm-hmm. in the early days, that they're not valuing what they're providing to their client. So, so what would you, you say that step is, is it, because when I know when I'm starting a new service, especially let's say I'm starting a new company right now doing video production for people, I tend to charge, I know I'm a little bit cheaper, but that's because you kind of feel like you still want to build that confidence and getting your name out there and you kind of feel like oh, I can always increase it later. Is that okay to think like that or no? It's a lot easier to decrease your price than it is to increase my mindset is do you want to be known for a premium service would you rather 10 clients giving you five thousand dollars so that's that's fifty thousand or 20 clients 
giving you $2,000, which is $40,000, which is going to be easier for you. 10 clients paying $5,000 or 20 clients paying $2,000. And they tend to be better clients too, the ones that can afford, the ones that appreciate your value and then work. Correct. This is, I know a lot of times we fall into a trap of trying to cater to our clients who can't afford. It's like, all right, we'll do this for you then. I will throw that in just to win the, the work, but then they yeah. actually aren't even good clients. And what that's catering to is your insecurities. Boom. And how do we get out of that insecurity? <laughs> actually value yourself and rather than, default to the negative mindset or negative thought, default to the positive thought and what is possible rather than what isn't possible. So focus on the higher end rather than the lower end. Mm, okay. Well, let's go to the step that I did skip that step. And it was <laughs> the next step where I said, okay, Lord, let's get clients to buy more. This is talking about what asking them upselling, asking referrals, that kind of thing. Yep. So for your outsourcing business, your main offer is, is selling outsourcing services. So you've got one transaction, recurring transaction per month. You've got a database there. Why can't you go back to each of those clients and then upsell them to video marketing services or upsell them to a joint venture business coaching service or upsell them to, to something else? Why can't you have two bites of the cherry mm -hmm. for each client? Mm, it's because you're also, you're just not trying to make money, but you're trying to identify that with the extra services, it's going to help them achieve their goals, right? Correct. So the video marketing services is going to help them market their business, which in turn is going to bring more clients to them, which in turn is going to help their business grow, which in turn will allow them to get another virtual assistant with you. The business coaching offering is going to help solidify the business's direction and their growth trajectory, which in turn is going to help them bring more clients in, get more revenue, make more profit and, and have the business owner happier. But in turn, it's going to come back to you as another sale with another VA. Mm, there you go. So let's wrap up. What are the five again? It was the leads. It leads, was conversion. conversion, average dollar sale, average number of transactions. And then the last step, the fifth step, is the profit margin. Every business is different with their profit margin. This is where it comes back to what do you want in your back pocket. It's looking at how can you service your clients and provide your offering with as little fat as possible within the business. This is where you're looking at expenses then. You're looking at- okay, Correct. You probably sign up to a million different softwares and things and you don't <laughs> even look at it anymore. Do I need all of those subscriptions? Do I need to make all of those flights or could I could I actually do Zoom calls for our meeting? Do I actually need X, Y, and Z in the business? Can I go back to my landlord and get a cheaper rental agreement? For me, it's why should the money be in someone else's pocket when it's better in my pocket? Yeah, I uh, Obviously, that. you want to look after your staff. If you look after your staff, your staff look after your customers and the customers look after you. Outside of that, see what, what you can cut, basically. Yeah, I love that. You Maybe just it it's so much simpler to really get your head around it because if you really just focus on these five areas and always seeing a little 1% improvement, I think this is where you can really impact the bottom line. So tell me more about your actual business coaching service. So like the typical clients you help and you know what's the process like when they actually want to work with you? So basically where I, I play is it's a B2B service-based business owner that is typically trading time for money. And I help them change their mindset from trading time for money to value for money, which allows them to have time and have freedom. Mm. And when you say trading time for money, is that still a lot of solopreneurs or they also have team and still no. trade their time for money? So typically they have a team that is trading time for money. So simplest way to describe an ideal client is a, a proven marketing agency, not one of the new digital marketing agencies that are looking for their first or second or third client. It's a proven marketing agency that has been around for five years, whatever. It's, it's got decent sized clients. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of the time they're charging time and materials for their, for their offering. They're not necessarily charging on a value based proposition. And what that means is the business owner ends up still be doing 50, 60, 70 hour weeks when that's not what they want to be doing. Mm, I love that. So the first step you would do is by ask them how many, how many hours you, you want to work, how much money do you want to make, and then really create that plan with them. And then what, do you have a monthly coaching or what sort of help do you help? It's working out where they are now, where they want to get to, 
helping them identify that business is separate to themselves and that business is a tool for life and then creating that and reverse engineering that roadmap on how they can get to the end goal in the simplest possible way. And then it's creating that roadmap, that strategy. And some clients, it's a weekly coaching session. Some it's a fortnightly, some it's a month. It depends on the size of the business. Yeah. And sometimes I'm coaching the business owner, but sometimes I'm coaching the, the senior leadership team as well. Mm. Do you have any mastermind groups that people can join or anything? Fancy you should say that. It's just in the process of being launched. So I do have a small one at the moment, but I'm launching a, a slightly larger one now for the slight, slightly smaller business that may may have say one to five staff or, or one one to one to ten staff. Sounds interesting. Well, where else can people connect with you? Because uh, yeah, I think you sound like you've got so many great insights because you've built businesses and you kind of really understand. And I know I've read your ebook and I've read some of your articles. It's amazing. So yeah, tell us where they can connect with you. Easiest way is website evolve to grow.com.au uh, or, or type into Google Tristan Wright and, and search for me. You'll find me on all the different socials. I think I typed in business coach the other day and evolve to grow came up number one. So I think your SEO is, is really good. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just just because I'm a business coach doesn't mean I don't know how to do SEO. I've got a. Marketing is really nice. His branding is really nice because, you know, sometimes business coaches can just really be good at, you know, coaching, but yeah. you've got the good. You've got. And you're very holistic. <laughs> well, that was one of the reasons why I got into business coaching because with my previous business, most of the business coaches were 50, 60-year-old males that had come out of corporate and, I, and there's no one that I identified with. So I'm like, there's got to be other people like me. So that's why I set my business up, with the business coaching business up because there wasn't, there wasn't at the time, there weren't 30, 40-year-old business coaches that could identify in a similar position to business owners at that, that a similar age. Yeah. All right. Well, what's the last key takeaway that you want to drive home with the audience today? Focus on the one thing. Mm. Have a think about that. What's your one thing? And that one thing, is that meaning it's supposed to be the best thing that could drive your result? Come on, give us a bit of more clue. <laughs> <gasps> what's the best way to explain this? People don't achieve what they want to achieve because they focus on five or six things or seven or eight. And what is that one thing? And what if you is it? With Tristan, you will figure it out. I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Having a coach is really good in a sense. It, you're just going to be able to dissect and, and kind of, you know, help us to clutter our mind and go, okay, no, this mm. is the best thing. And then holding someone accountable. At the end of the day, people get stuck in their own mind. You need to have other people to talk to. Sometimes you need guidance. Sometimes you just need to declutter. Well, thank you so much, Tristan, for your time. I learned so much and I'm sure the audience has too. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions for myself or Tristan, leave them in the comments below. But if you like more videos like this, please check over here.